For today's lesson, we will be uh, dividing decimals fluently, and our standard, once again, is 6NS3, where you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm for each operation. So just like when we were multiplying decimals and uh, earlier on when we were dividing fractions, there are some steps that we need to follow. Uh, when we divide by a decimal, we're going to move the decimal point to the end of the divisor. And the divisor is the number on the outside. And what we're doing there is we're turning that divisor into a whole number. And if we make a change to our divisor, we have to make the same change to our dividend, and that's the number on the inside. So we're going to move the decimal point the same number of places in the dividend. So if we move it one place in our divisor, we do move it one place in our dividend. Two places in our divisor, two places in our dividend, and so on. And then we're going to divide, as we um, have always done. And once we have done our division, we're going to move that decimal point straight up from the dividend into the quotient. And the quotient is our answer uh, to our division question. We do have a secondary option that we can do is we could convert our decimals to fractions and then we could follow our dividing fractions rules that we learned earlier. So Eric and his friend live one mile apart on the same street. Each block on the street is two tenths of a mile long. And we wanna know how many blocks apart do the two friends live. So we're gonna take that mile and we're gonna break it up into smaller sections. And anytime we take uh, a number and break it up into smaller pieces, that tells us that we're going to divide. So we have that one mile divided into uh, two fifth of a mile sections. So we're gonna write it in our standard form for division. And we're gonna put the two tenths on the outside since that's our divisor and one on the inside because that's our dividend. So we're gonna take that decimal point and we're gonna move it to the end of our divisor. And when we go from in front of a number to behind, that's we're moving that decimal point one place. Well, our dividend is a whole number, and you usually do not write whole numbers with decimal points, so we're going to need to put one in. And since it's a whole number, that decimal point goes at the end of the whole number, and then we're going to put a zero behind that decimal point. We haven't changed the value of our number. We, just, we have just written it a little bit differently. So since we moved our decimal point one place in our divisor, we do need to move it one place in our dividend. And then we're going to take about three seconds to rewrite this to clean it up. So the two tenths is now two, and the one is now ten. And ten divided by two is five. So we have five blocks. So in our second example here, we want to find the value of 16 divided by 4 tenths. So once again, 4 tenths is our divisor, so that goes on the outside. 16 is our dividend, that goes on the inside. We move that decimal point to the end of our divisor. 16 is a whole number, so I put a decimal point and zero in, and I move it one place in my dividend. The 4 tenths is now 4, the 16 is now 160. 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 minus 16 is 0. Since I've subtracted and I have a 0, I can actually take this last 0 and just bring it straight up into my quotient. 96 divided by 12 hundredths, so 12 hundredths is our divisor, 96 is our dividend. We're going to move it to the end of our divisor. Since I'm moving it past uh, two digits, that means I've moved it two places. So once again, I have a whole number. So I'm going to put a decimal point, and this time I'm going to put two zeros on because I have to move that decimal point two places. So 12 hundredths is now 12. 96 is now 9,600. 12 would go into 96 eight times, and it's extremely important to keep things lined up since we're going into 96. Make sure that the 8 goes over the 6, because that's the last digit. So 12 times 8 is 96. 96 minus 96 is 0. After my subtraction, since I have 0, I can take these two remaining zeros, and I can move them straight up into the quotient. So here, if I have 1 divided by 5 tenths, so take 5 tenths, make that my divisor, move it to the end, put a decimal point zero on my whole number, 5 tenths is now 5, 1 is now 10, 
5 goes into 10 two times. Forty-eight divided by three tenths. Decimal point to the end of my divisor. Put a decimal point and zero on. Move the decimal point in the same number of places in my dividend. Three tenths is now three. Forty-eight is now four hundred eighty. Three goes into four once. Four minus three is one. Three goes into eighteen six times. Six times three is eighteen. And since I have a zero here, I can bring that last zero up. And then 75 divided by 15 hundredths. Move the decimal point to the end of my divisor. Put a decimal point and two zeros on. 15 hundredths is now 15. 75 is now 7,500. 15 goes into 75 five times. 5 times 15 is 75. 75 minus 75 is 0. And bring those two zeros up. Now we have 8 tenths divided by 2 tenths. So both our divisor and our dividend are decimals. But it's the same concept, the same idea. Okay. I move the decimal point to the end of my divisor, and now I move it the same number of places in my dividend. The only difference now is I don't have to put in the decimal point and a zero, so I move it one place in my divisor, so I move it one place in my dividend. Two tenths is two, eight tenths is eight, two goes into eight, four times. We're gonna have some other situations that we're going to run into, so I'm gonna add an example here. We're gonna take six tenths and divide it by five tenths. So five tenths is our divisor, six tenths is our dividend. Move our decimal points, five tenths is now five. Six tenths is now six. Five goes into six once. One times five is five. Six minus five is one. At this point, you would have a remainder. However, there should be no remainders today. So the solution to our problem is we don't want to change the value. We still want it to be 6. So like we did earlier, we're going to put a decimal point and a 0 on. So we bring that 0 down. 5 goes into 10 two times. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 10 is 0. And now we have to remember that final step, which is to bring our decimal point straight up into our quotient. And this is where keeping things lined up uh, is extremely important. So I'm going to bring my decimal point straight up. My answer is 1.2. So 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths. Move the decimal point in your divisor. Same number of places in your dividend. 3 tenths is 3. 9 tenths is 9. 3 goes into 9 3 times. Eight tenths divided by four tenths. Decimal points at the end of your divisor, same number of places in your dividend. Four tenths is now four. Eight tenths is now eight. Eight divided by four is two. Seven tenths divided by two tenths. End of your divisor. Same number of places in your dividend. Two tenths is two. Seven tenths is now seven. Two goes into seven three times. Three times two is six. Seven minus six is one. Decimal point and zero. Two goes into ten five times. Five times two is ten. Ten minus ten is zero. And then bring your decimal point straight up into your quotient. If in a question you find that you keep putting zeros on, that usually means you've made a mistake because we're not at the stage where we're going to have repeating decimals yet. It's no different if the numbers go out to the hundredths place either. From tenths, you're still going to move the decimal point to the end of your divisor, and you're going to move it the same number of places in your dividend. So the four hundredths is four, fifty-six hundredths is fifty-six, four goes into five once, Five minus four is one. Four goes into 16 four times. Four times four is 16. 
no different. Seventy-two hundredths divided by three hundredths, so three hundredths is our divisor. Seventy-two hundredths is our dividend. End of our divisor. Same number of places in our dividend. Three hundredths is three. Seventy-two hundredths is seventy-two. Three goes into seventy-two twice. Three times two is six. Seven minus six is one. Bring down the two. Three goes into twelve four times. So we get twenty-four. Ninety-five hundredths divided by five hundredths. Same number of divisor. Same number of places in the dividend. Five hundredths is five. Ninety-five hundredths is ninety-five. Five goes into nine once. Sometimes five is five. Nine minus five is four. Five goes into forty-five nine times. Nine times five is forty-five. You get nineteen. 62 hundredths divided by 4 hundredths. Move it twice. Move it twice. 4 goes into 6 once. 6 times 4 is 2. 4 goes into 22 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. 22 minus 20 is 2. We don't want a remainder, so we're going to put a decimal point and 0 on. And you, you can bring your decimal point up now if you want to. You don't have to wait until the very end. You can move it when you get to it as well. Bring the zero down. Four goes into 20 five times. Okay. So we have one in 96 hundredths divided by four tenths. Decimal point to the end of our divisor. And remember, we're moving it the same number of places in our dividend. So in this situation, we're not moving it to the end of our dividend because that would not be the same number of places. So the 4 tenths is now 4. The 1 in 96 hundredths is now 19.6. So 4 would go into 19 four times. 4 times 4 is 16. 19 minus 16 is 3. Bring your decimal point up. Bring your 6 down. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So again, you're moving the decimal point the same number of places in the dividend as the divisor. So 1 in 68 hundredths divided by 6 tenths. Remember, you're moving it to the end of your divisor and the same number of places in your dividend. And that's where those arrows come in handy because you, uh, those arrows should match when you are moving your decimal point. 6 goes into 16 twice. 12, 16 minus 12 is 4. 6 goes into 48 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. 48 minus 48 is 0. And bring that decimal point straight up. Two and eighty-eight hundredths divided by eight tenths. One place in your divisor, so one place in your dividend. Eight tenths is eight. Two and eighty-eight hundredths is twenty. Oops. Started to write my eight a little too early there. Apologize for that. Twenty-eight and eight tenths. Eight goes into twenty-eight three times. That gives you twenty-four. Four. Remember, you can bring your decimal point up now if you wanted to, or you can wait till the end. Doesn't matter as long as it gets into that answer. 8 goes into 48 six times. We get an answer of 3 and 6 tenths. In our final example for today, we have 1 and 2 tenths going into 6 and 54 hundredths. One place in your divisor, so you move it one place in your dividend. 1 and 2 tenths is 12. 6 and 54 hundredths becomes 65 and 4 tenths. 12 goes into 65 five times. 5 times 12 is 60. 12 goes into 54 four times. So you get 48. 54 minus 48 is 6. No remainders. So this time we just put a 0 because we already have our decimal point. Bring the 
bring that down. 12 goes into 60 five times. And that's all for today's lesson. As always, I hope this helps.